Good morning, my dear students. We will discuss in chapter 1 the organizational behavior. After studying this chapter, you should be able to describe what managers do, define uh, organizational behavior, OP, explain the value of the systematic study of OP, identify the contributions made by major behavioral science disciplines to OP, list the major challenges and opportunities for managers to use OP concepts. Let's begin briefly defining the terms manager and organization, the place where managers work. Then let's look at the manager's job specifically. What do managers do? Managers get things done through other people. They make decisions, allocate resources, and direct the activities of others. To attain goals, managers do their work in an organization which is concisely a coordinated social unit composed of two or more people that function on a relatively uh, continuous basis to achieve a common goal or set of goals by this definition. Manufacturing and services firms are, uh, firms are organizations and so are schools, hospitals, retail stores, police departments, and local, state, and federal government agencies. The people who uh, do these activities of others and who are responsible for Attaining goals in these organizations are managers, sometimes called administrators, especially in not-for-profit organizations. Here in our slide, we can define the managers or administrators as individuals who achieve goals through other people. And we have three types of the managerial activities and we will discuss the managerial functions but now the managerial activities are make decisions, allocate resources, direct activities of others to attain goals. Then we will define the organization uh, a consciously coordinated social unit composed of two or more people that functions on a relatively continuous basis to achieve a common goal or set of goals. Today we have these four management functions, planning, organizing, controlling and leading. Because organizations exist to achieve goals, someone has to define those goals and the means for achieving them. Management is that someone, the planning function encompasses defining the organization's goals, establishing an overall strategy for achieving those goals and developing a comprehensive set of plans to integrate and to coordinate activities. Evidence indicates this function increases the most as manager more move from lower level to middle level management. Managers are also responsible for designing an organization's structure. We call this function the organizing 
It includes determining what tasks are to be done, who is to do them, who the tasks are to be grouped, who reports to whom, and where decisions are to be made. Then every organization contains people and its management's job to direct and coordinate those people. This is the leading function when managers motivate employee direct their activities, select the most effective communication channels or resolve conflicts among members. They are engaging in leading to ensure things are going as they should. Management must monitor the organization's performance and compare it with previously set of goals. If there are any significant divisions, uh, it's management job to get the organization back to the track. The, this monitoring, comparing and potential correcting is the controlling function. So using the functional approach, the answer to the question, what do managers do, is that they plan, organize, lead and control. The first function of the management functions is planning. We can define the planning as a process that includes defining goals, establishing strategy, and developing plans to coordinate activities. Organizing is the second management function. We can define it as determining what tasks are to be done, who is to do them, how the tasks are to be grouped, who reports to whom, and where decisions are to be made. Then in the third function in the management functions is leading. The leading is a function that includes motivating employees, directing others, selecting the most effective communication channels, and resolving conflicts. conflicts. And the final function of the management function is controlling, monitoring activities to ensure they are being accomplished as planned and correcting any significant deviations in the tasks or activities. Mansberg identified the managerial rules as three types of rules, interpersonal rules, informational rules, and the decisional rules. In, inter, uh, in interpersonal rules, all managers are required to perform duties that are uh, simple in the nature. For instance, when the president of college hands out diplomas at commerce of faculty, superior gets group of high school students a tour of the planet. He or she is acting in the um, figurehead role. All managers also have leadership role. This role includes hiring, training, motivating, and disciplining employees. The third role within the interpersonal grouping is the liaison role or contacting others who provide the manager with information, the sales manager who obtains information from the quality control manager is in his or her own company, has an inter internal liaison relationship when that sales manager has contact with other sales executives through a marketing trade association he or she has an outs relationships 
we will return here for our slide uh, we will define the three types of the interpersonal rules uh, the first one is the figurehead simple kid required to perform a number of routine duties of a legal or social nature and leader the leader responsible for the motivation and the direction of employees then liaison maintains a network of outside contacts who provide favor and information Then in the second type of the managerial rules is the informational rules. All managers to some degree collect information from outside organization and institutions, typically by scanning the news media, including the internet and taking with other people to learn of changes in the public states, what competition, maybe planning, and the like. Mintzberg called this the monitor rule. Managers are act a conduit to transmit information to organizational member. This is the disseminator rule. In addition, managers perform a spoken person rule when they represent the organization to outside. Then we will return here for our slides that divide the informational rules for monitor, receives a wide variety of information, serves as nerve center of internal and external information of the organization, and disseminator transmits information received from outsider or from other employees to members of the organization. A spoken person transmits information to outsiders on organizations, plans, policies, policies, actions, and results, serve as expert on organization industry. The third, the third type of the managerial rules is the decisional rules. In the decisional rules, Mintzberg identified four rules that require making decisions in the in entrepreneur rule managers initiate and over see new projects that will improve their organization's performance as disturbance handler managers take corrective action in response to unforeseen problems as resource allocates Managers are responsible for allocating human, physical, and monetary resources. Finally, managers perform negotiation role in which they discuss issues and bargain with others' units to gain advantage for their own unit. And here in our slide, we have the decisional role definitions. Uh, the entrepreneur searches organization and its environment for opportunities and initiates projects to bring about change. The disturbance handler rule responsible for corrective action when organization faces important unexpected disturbances. Resource allocator makes or approves the significant of organizational decisions negotiator responsible for representing the organization at major negotiations then we will discuss the management skills the management skills Still another way of considering what managers do is to look at the skills or competences they need to achieve their goals. Researchers have identified a number of skills that differentiate effective from ineffective managers. In the first, we have the definition of skills. The skills is the ability 
to translate knowledge into action that result in desired performance then we have three types of or three classifications of the management skills technical skills human skills and conceptual skills the technical skills is the ability to apply specialized knowledge or expertise and in the human the human skills is the ability to work with understand and motive other people both individually and in groups the ability to understand communicate with motivate and support other people both individually and in groups define human skill many people are technically proficient but poor listener unable to understand the needs of others or weak at managing conflicts because managers get things done through other people they must have good human skills then in the conceptual skill the concept the conceptual skills definition is the mental ability to analyze and diagnose complex situation managers must have the mental ability to analyze and diagnose complex situation these tasks requires the conceptual skills decision making for instance requires managers to identify problems develop alternative solutions to correct those problems evaluate those alternative solutions and select the best one after they have selected a course of action managers must be able to organize a plan of action and then execute it the ability to integrate new ideas with existing procedures and innovate on the job are also critical conceptual skills for today's managers then we will differentiate between the effective versus successful managerial activities Fred Lothens and his associates looked at what managers do from a somewhat different perspective they asked two managers who move up the quickest in an organization do the same activities and with the same emphasis is as manager who do the best job you might think the answer is yes but that's not always the cause Luthens has associated studies more than 450 managers all engaged in four managerial activities these managerial activities is the in our slide traditional management communication human resource management and networking and in this figure the average manager spent 32 percent of his or her time in traditional manager 29 percent communicating 20 percent in human resource management activities and 19 percent networking and the successful manager give the most uh, give the most uh, uh, percentage for the networking uh, 48 percent and then the effective manager have 26 for the human resource management and 44 percentage for the communication then we will enter organizational behavior and we will define the organizational behavior op is a field of study that investigates the impact that individuals 
groups and structure have on behavior within organization for the purpose of applying such knowledge toward improving an organization's effectiveness. Organizational behavior is a, is a field of study, meaning that it's distinct area of expertise with a common body of knowledge. What, do, what does it study? It studies three, three determin, determinants of behavior in organizations, individuals, groups, and structure. In addition, OP applies the knowledge gained about individuals, groups, and the effect of structure on behavior in order to make organizations work more effectively. Here we have replacing the institutional with the systematic study. Uh, the, in, the institutional study, a feeling not necessary, supported by research, but the systematic study, looking at relationships, attempting to attribute causes and effects, and drawing conclusions based on scientific evidence, provides a means to predict behaviors. The systematic approach in this book will uncover important facts and relationships and provide the base from which to make more accurate predictions of behavior underlying this systematic approach is the belief that behavior is not random rather we can identify fundamental contents underlying the behavior of all individuals and modify them to reflect individual differences these fundamental Contents are very important. Why? Because they allow predictability. Behavior is generally predictable and the systematic study of behavior is a mean of making reasonably accurate prediction when we use the term systematic study. The organizational behavior is an applied behavior science built on contributions from a number of behavioral disciplines, mainly psychology, social, social psychology, sociology, and anthropology. Psychology contributions have been mainly at the individual or micro level of analysis, while the other disciplines have contributed to our understanding of macro concepts such as group processes and organization exhibit 13 is an overview of the major contributions to the study of organizational behavior uh, the psychology is the science that seeks to measure explain and sometimes change the behavior of humans and other animals the psychology study concerned with the individual aspects and then in the sociology uh, is the study of people in relations to their fellow human the sociology study uh, concerns with the organizational system and the group aspects generally considered a branch of psychology While psychology focused on the individual, sociology studied people in relation to their social environment or cultural. Sociologists have contributed to OP through their study of group behavior in organizations, particularly formal and complex organizations. Perhaps most important, sociologists have studied 
organizational cultural, formal organization theory, and structural organizational technology, communications, power, and conflict. In the social psychology science, an area within psychology that blends concepts from psychology and sociology and that focused on the influence of people on uh, on one another generally considered a branch of psychology blends concepts from both psychology and sociology to focus on people influence on one another one major study area is a change how to implement it and how to reduce barriers to its acceptance. Social psychologists also contribute to understanding and changing attitudes, identifying a communication patterns and building trust. Finally, they have made important contributions to our study of group behavior, power, and conflict. In the anthropology is the study of societies to learn about human beings and their activities. Anthropologists work to cultures and environments has helped us understand differences in fundamental values, attitudes, and behavior between people in different countries and within different organizations, much of our current understanding of organizational cultural, organizational environment and the differences among the national cultures is a result of the work of anthropology or these using their methods. The organizational behavior facing some challenges and opportunities. The first one, responding to globalization by increased foreign assignments, working with people from different cultures, coping with anti-capitalism backlash, overseeing movement of jobs to, co to countries with low cost low labor, Managing people during the war on terror. And the second challenge is the managing work diversity. Embracing diversity, changing U.S. demographics, implications for managers, recognizing and responding to differences. The major workforce diversity categories hair, gender, disability, age, national origin, race, and domestic patterns. Then we will complete the challenges and opportunities for OP, improving quality and productivity, responding to the labor shortage, improving the customer service. Then here, we will identify the quality and some challenges and opportunities for the OP, like improving people's skills, empowering people, stimulating innovation and change, coping with temperance, working working in network organizations, helping employees balance work-life conflicts, improving ethical behavior, managing people during the war on to, to. Then we have the definition of model. The model uh, an abstraction of reality, a simplified representation of some real world phenomena. It begins with the individual level, then group level, then the organizational level. And we have here the basic OP model that included the inputs, processes, and outcomes. And the outside environment then we will differentiate between the dependent variable and independent variable the dependent variables like 
productivity. The productivity a performance measure that includes effectiveness and efficiency. Effectiveness is the achievement of, go of goals, but the efficiency meeting the goals at Here we have some dependent variables like absentees, is the failure to report to work and the turnover, the voluntary and in voluntary permanent withdrawals from an organization. And we have some other dependent variables like the organizational citizenship behavior discretionary behavior that is not part of employees formal job requirements but that never please promotes the effective fu functioning of other dependent variable like the job satisfaction a general attitude not a behavior toward one's job a positive feeling of one's job resulting from an evaluation of its characteristics and the independent variables can be classified for the individual level variables group level variables and the organizational system level variables so we can here we ending the chapter one thank you my dear students